We have this uh, uh, project with uh, Denver University and the Rotary Club, uh, where we are partnering with Maji. And uh, we are working in Kibera. And one of the things that we need to do overall is to improve the quality of life and the health of the people in the area that we are working in. And this is revolving around uh, water and sanitation facilities uh, that had been put up uh, for some time. And we are reviving them. And through them, that becomes like a rallying point. It's a multi-pronged kind of approach here, but we are looking at uh, one, we need to teach people about health and hygiene so that they can appreciate that the, these facilities, as long as they're there and they are functional, it improves their quality of life in the sense that they can get clean water and they can also um, access clean sanitation facilities. There's also a, a human dignity involved because you're using a clean facility. One of the things that we're doing is that we're working through communities because we have community-based organizations made up of members who live within the Kibera. We can go and give education. At the same time, the same communities should run the facilities as income-generating activities. We put them together, teach them how they can run the facility as a business and how they can make uh, an income out of it, whereby it is satisfying their income needs as well as their social needs in terms of the things that they are, uh, in terms of their life. So getting people together and to believe in that uh, these facilities can be functional has been our major uh, activity. And this one has been through relationship building. So they can buy in into our ideas. Because without people, you realize that those facilities cannot function. Imagine now Fanisi, we have the Rotary Club of Denver Southeast. And then we also have uh, the Denver University. And now the Silanga Development Group. And everybody will have a role to play. In Undugu, where we have our primary school, we had one facility. It, it had no uh, clear uh, demarcation between the girl's side and the boy's side. So we managed to put up a wall, uh, whereby now we have a girl's side and a boy's side, so all of them are going to benefit out of it. We had uh, ab about four tanks which had been, uh, uh, which had been uh, vandalized, so we've managed to repair those pipes. The other major challenge now has been the issue of water, because without water, those facilities cannot function. And the politics of water in the slum area uh, are quite uh, dynamic. The communities, especially the committee that is in charge of the whole of the project, has managed to talk to the people who own the water besides the Nairobi Water Company, which is a service provider. And they have managed to get water to uh, some of the facilities. We have an opportunity of ensuring that people get adequate uh, and clean facilities and also clean water. And again also, uh, we have a potential of maybe replicating the same. Because if we can bring them up and ensure that they are working, uh, it can also be a model that can be borrowed by other people who would like to do the same thing. And when you walk in Kibera, sometimes you realize that uh, the people who are living there uh, are there not maybe sometimes by their choice. Maybe it's, uh, it's fate. And when I look at uh, how they live and the environment that they live in, I feel that if I could make a small difference as a person, I think that would really, uh, I would really feel that I'm giving something back to the community. As we do all these interventions in terms of uh, uh, training people and also accessing them water to water and sanitation, uh, we also have a role in terms of advocacy and enlightening them because people need to take charge of their own lives and we need to give them a voice, do capacity building for them so they can also learn how to fight for their own rights. Especially like in this country, with the passage of the new constitution, uh, with the Bill of Rights, water is a right to everybody. So what we will do is uh, we need to empower them in terms of knowledge and also guiding them on where and how they can lobby for the government to recognize that the informal settlement, it's people who live there and they have a right to live in this country and they deserve better services than what they are getting currently.